Do you love slasher horror films? Although it's kind of cruel and dangerous for our mind, we love the adrenaline rush, don't we? But deep inside, we know these are just fiction. However, this video is going to show you something real, but more horrifying. Today we're going to show you a method of execution that goes beyond our imagination. And believe me, the level of cruelty can even chill your spine from the core. Stay tuned for the most cruel execution. So without any further ado, let's start. As soon as the cannon was created, it was only a matter of time until someone strapped a prisoner to the front, lit a fuse, and let the cannons go, turning the body into a constellation of anguish, with his head falling perfectly in front. Up to the 20th century, blowing from a gun was reportedly employed as a method of execution. Early in the 16th and 17th centuries, from Ceylon, which is modern-day Sri Lanka, to Mozambique and Brazil, Portuguese colonists began using this technique. They did so starting as early as 1509. Throughout the whole 17th century and to the early 18th, the Mughals employ this tactic, especially when dealing with rebels. Most strongly connected to the British colonial rule in India is this type of execution. After the Indian Rebellion of 1857, the British employed the practice of blowing from a gun to put enemies to death as well as to execute Indian sepoys who had been found guilty of deserting their posts. In the later half of the 18th century, the British introduced blowing from guns using the techniques previously used by the Mughals. According to several historians, the Indian subcontinent's ancient Mughal punishment was shooting people up with weapons. Amidst his father's several battles with the Lodi dynasty, Babur's son, Humayun, is claimed to have executed 100 Afghan prisoners on March 6, 1526, just before the first Mughal emperor began to rule. In the second half of the 17th century, the Jat people in northern India rebelled and conducted raids against the Mughal Empire. And, according to one narrative, the Emperor Aurangzeb ordered the execution of one of their commanders by being shot in the head. The victim is often bound to the mouth of the cannon before being shot, which results in death and the practice of blowing from a gun. As a result, the penalty for believers was increased beyond death. Foreign occupiers, who were concurrently occupying Africa, Australasia, and the Americas, were aware of this, and typically avoided using the practice. The most recent notable application of this technique was in Afghanistan in 1930, when it was used against 11 Panjshiri rebels. Before the Indian Rebellion, the British had a long-standing practice of using this method to put to death sepoys who were judged guilty of mutiny or desertion. One historian asserts that the British custom dates back to 1760, when the British East India Company looked into the many forms of lethal punishment that were being used. According to research conducted in the 24 Parganas district, flogging to death was the most common form of military execution. The East India Company chose this method over death by flogging because it was more deterrent, more visible, and more humane. They did this by blowing from a gun, an old Mughal punishment, Already in 1761, Lakipur received orders to cannonball the captured thief leader to scare off other would-be burglars. A subadar, who is also known as a native officer, plotted to convince the soldiers under his command to join an enemy force in secret in March 1764. When his scheme was uncovered, he was court-martialed and shot in front of his troops. Major Hector Monroe hanged 24 to 25 ringleaders, who led a regiment to defect that same year in September. Furthermore, mutinies occurred in 1782 at Bardaman and Barakpur. The Bardaman court sentenced three mutineers to death, with the last one being hanged and the other two being shot. The last defendant in the Barakpur trials was given a thousand lashes and was drummed out of cantonments with a rope around his neck, while the other four were given the death penalty. Six regiments mutinied over pay owed and imprisoned their captains during the Third Anglo-Mysore War. When the order returned, Two of the most aggressive mutinous members were shot and killed. The use of a gunshot to kill someone wasn't limited to sepoys. The 1st Battalion of the Madras Foot Artillery was made up of British soldiers that revolted in 1798. The sentence for one British soldier was to be shot dead. However, this appears to have been an uncommon case, and according to one historian, the British soldier Forster is the only one who has ever been shot by a gun while being a member of the European Union. The British colonial authorities employed cannon blows as an execution technique several times after the rebellion of 1857. For instance, the British used cannons to blow 65 members of the Sikh sect Kukas or Namdari to death in 1871. 
Mahmud Shah Durrani's soldiers decisively defeated the Gilzai tribes in 1802, and to deter further hostility, he had one commander and his two sons shot, as well as a minaret made of Gilzai skulls. When Shuja's half-brother, Zaman Shah Durrani, who had been the ruler of the Durrani Empire before Mahmud overthrew him in 1800, was captured through treachery, Shuja's half-brother Mahmud's half-brother Shuja Durrani exacted revenge on Ashik, a Mahmud ally, by shooting him in the head. This occurred in 1803, shortly after Shuja had driven out Mahmud from power. What a gruesome episode from history. Don't you think people, especially dictators, lacked empathy and kindness at the time? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And for more gruesome and exciting content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon ASAP. We'll catch up with you in the next one. Until then, peace.